The topics of today's interview, data sharing and CBI. More and more data is required by many countries and agencies and also within the supply chain there is often need to supply data. However, data can be very valuable and quite frequently data owners like to label data confidential. Pirates in all forms and shapes are especially interested in confidential data. Pirates who might reverse the principle, no data, no market, to confidential data, new markets, new opportunities. A tough but interesting topic I will discuss with Mercedes Vinas from the European Chemical Agency. Mercedes, welcome. Thank you. But before we start, for you also the question, what did you do in 1996? Well, 1996, I had just uh, started to study chemical engineering in, in uh, Spain, so I was uh, still uh, very far away from all these chemical uh, legislation topics. And at which university? In uh, Zaragoza, in uh, Spain. Mercedes, in the early days of REACH, you worked for the European Chemical Industry Council, CEFIC. Um, at that time, the wish to protect data was important. Can you remember for what information data confidentiality was deemed essential and uh, what the main concerns and arguments were from industry at that point in time? Well, it was uh, any piece of information that could provide an insight in the, in the market, in market statistics. And uh, with this I mean information on customers, on volumes, uh, that kind of thing. But also information on uh, substance, compo substance composition. Um, like the presence of certain impurities, for example, could they disclose information on how the substance is manufactured or what kind of uh, raw materials are used. This is always considered very sensitive for industry. In those days, there was also the whole discussion on the publication of the company names, so the names of the, sub of the companies that have uh, registered. Uh, I believe this has evolved over time. It's, uh, it's not a problem anymore. Um, companies are often in agreement that we disclose their names, and it's those cases when they consider it's uh, uh, detrimental for their business. They just uh, claim confidentiality, and if it's justified, we, we don't publish. And at that point in time also uh, the general public, but also the uh, non-governmental organizations, they demanded to know more uh, than the information that was already on the safety data sheets. Can you share with us what is currently disseminated and what ECHA aims to achieve with dissemination? Well, the REACH regulation defines uh, pretty clearly what, what must always be disseminated, uh, but also the information that is to be disseminated unless claimed confidential. I think over time we have um, tried to extend the scope of, of, this, of these provisions on the REACH uh, in ECAP uh, to publish some more and more information, uh, such as the information on uh, exposure scenarios that uh, will soon be available, uh, but uh, also on the format, on the way the information is disseminated. Um, we believe that uh, different audiences may be interested in different levels of detail and uh, putting everything together made it very difficult. So uh, we have now uh, installed, as you may know, a tiered approach So uh, for concerned citizens, uh, very simple information to more details for the scientific community. But we're not going to stop there. This is a topic where we want to improve uh, more and more. Uh, so we are always uh, on the look for further improvements and um, I will give more details in my presentation later this week. In 2018, or before 2018, a lot of uh, small and medium enterprises will register. Are they already aware of things going to be disseminated? Well, this is a really important part of uh, the work we do uh, with uh, awareness raising. So uh, to make sure that companies not only know that they have to register, but that they also become familiar with the information that will be disclosed, such as that their company names will be appearing on the ECA website. Uh, we try to make them understand the, this, uh, that they uh, pre-prepare their dossiers in a way that can be uh, publicly available. And we try to always emphasize this when we, when we uh, talk to them. The REACH dossier will become publicly available uh, 12 years after it has been submitted uh, to ECHA. How will this work? Will ECHA also make the non-disseminated uh, information publicly available after that date? Well, the, what we call uh, the 12 years rule uh, does not apply, of course, to the entire dossier. So uh, we will uh, grant access to the information that has been submitted uh, more than 12 years uh, in advance. Uh, via the normal uh, inquiry process, uh, but we still need to sort out a number of details uh, around this process. Uh, but uh, it, it will not affect the entire, the entire dossier, it's only some parts of it. And do you also expect that the lead registrant will remain actively in, uh, involved in that process for new registrants to mm. get the data? 
Well, we think the registration dossier is uh, evolving over time. Uh, so uh, even uh, 12 years after it's submitted, uh, there may be, for example, the need to generate new information because there is an ECA decision on the dossier. There may be new companies bringing new uses to the dossier. So uh, it's quite reasonable to think that this cooperation among registrants will uh, still be there beyond 2018 uh, because they need to accommodate all this new, uh, new information being available and giving access to the newcomers as well. So as long as the sharing is uh, fair, transparent and non-discriminatory, uh, we believe this cooperation will still be there uh, for a long time. Okay, and does that also mean that new registrants have to purchase letters of access uh, for the data that's already there or is that free of charge? Uh, I think they will still have to purchase letter of access. I think the access to the studies as such is not the only uh, thing that is covered by the letter of access. Uh, think, for example, of the chemical safety report that in some cases is jointly developed and the new registrants still need to get access to that, uh, to that chemical safety report uh, to do their registration. In several non-EU countries, uh, uh, REACH-like legislation is created. Um, would you recommend the use of uh, EU REACH data in order to register or use such data everywhere needed? In ECA, we're very keen that the information that is submitted under REACH is, uh, is further used uh, to support um, uh, regulatory developments, uh, but also to support scientific developments. Uh, so it should support the decision making. But that doesn't mean that uh, when you are uh, to do a registration or a notification in a different jurisdiction, you don't need to uh, comply still with intellectual property rights with ownership issues. So what we plan to do is uh, make this information available in a way that can be used, that can be processed, uh, but uh, more from the safer use of chemicals angle, uh, as a, uh, preparation of safety data sheets, for example, rather than preparation of, of dossiers as such. Final question. In Taiwan, more than 50% of the registrants uh, claim a sort of confidentiality. Um, what is the percentage in Europe? The percentage in Europe has remained quite low over the last years. I think we are talking around uh, 200 confidentiality claims submitted per year. When you compare that number with the few thousands registration dossiers that we get every year, it's a, it's, it's a pretty low percentage. It has remained like this over the years. It's mainly on uh, company names, substance name, tonnage bans. Those are the most uh, frequently claimed confidential uh, uh, items in a dossier. Uh, let's see how it evolves, but uh, we'll keep an eye on it. But uh, so far, we don't have any reason to believe that the, this trend is going to change. Okay, uh, thank you very much for sharing this useful information on data sharing, dissemination and CBI. I would suggest that similar to the pirate on our cartoon, we will keep a close eye on these global developments. <laughs>